In this tutorial, we are going to create this car crash scene in Blender. Most of it is going to be driven by simulation, but I'm going to show you a way you can tailor it to have your car doors fly open or just add any details that you want to the animation. We're going to simulate the crash, we're going to add some particles for the glass, and finally we're going to render out some smoke to tie it all together. This tutorial is most suitable for you guys who already have some experience in Blender, but feel free to follow along and leave a comment if you get stuck on any of the steps. So I can help you on the way. Let's not waste any time and dive straight into the tutorial. Alright, so to actually get the car model that we are going to crash, uh, you can just download any free car model from the internet, but I'm using this website called CG Trader, and you can just click cars here and hit this box, so it's gonna filter out everything so you only get the free ones, and you can just uh, choose whatever model that you like. This method is gonna work for pretty much all of these models, but you wanna make sure that you have something that is high poly enough so you can deform it and it will uh, look realistic. But uh, you could use uh, any website that you want, or you could even model your own, but uh, I'm not that good at modeling, so uh, I'm gonna use some model from here. Okay guys, so let's start with opening up a new Blender scene, then just select everything and delete. And to actually import our car model that we got from CG Trader, we wanna go to File, Import, and then select whatever file extension that we had on our model. So in my case, that's OBJ, so I'm just gonna select that and uh, find my 3D model. Just double click that and then we can hit S to scale it down and orient it correctly. Then we want to add in a plane to act as our ground for the collision. So we just want to make that pretty big so we have some, uh, uh, some margin. Then we can hit Ctrl A and apply the scale. Then before we do anything else we want to make sure that the car has a bit less geometry so it will be faster to work with when we do all these kinds of simulations and stuff. So we want to select it, go to modifier tab and give it a decimate modifier. We can select a value of maybe 0 0.5 and it will half the amount of triangles it has. And as you can see it still keeps its original shape but we have a, li a little bit less geometry to work with. So let's just apply that using Control A. Alright, now let's uh, create the actual deformation object that will drive the deformation when it crashes. So just duplicate this car and hide the original one and then name it something like deform. And don't forget to apply the scale, then give it a remesh modifier and turn it to something like 0 0.5. So this will create this really simplified shape maybe 0 0.6 and just apply that using Control A. Now we can parent this uh, original object to our new deform object so just select the original then select a new one and hit Control P and select parent to object so now now that we move around this object the original is gonna follow. So we can just move this back a bit and hit I to add in a keyframe for the location and grab it forward then give it a new location keyframe. To give it some linear interpolation, we can just hover the mouse over here, hit T, and choose linear. So now you can see it kind of drives forward. That's a bit too fast in my opinion, so I'm just going to move this keyframe to frame 40, and that is automatically going to make it a bit slower. So yeah, that's perfect. Uh, now let's hide the original one and just work on the deformation in the crash. So we want to select this one and go to its physics properties and give it a soft body. And as you can see when we uh, simulate this it is going to try to follow the animation but it's kind of weird so we want to make sure that before the collision happens it follows the keyframes 100% and then at the frame of the collision we want to make it so that it goes com completely simulated. So to do that, we want to go to goal right here, strength, and go to frame 40. Oh, sorry, uh, frame uh, 39. Make sure that these both are uh, at one, then give those a keyframe. Move to frame 40 and turn them both to zero, and then keyframe them both. And as you can see, that this will kind of make it so that it starts simulating at frame 40 and just flies away for now. But we want it to actually collide with this plane here, so we want to give that one a collision modifier. And if we play now, we will see that it actually collides with the ground. 
but now it just kind of sacks together like this and we want it to have more like a uh, metal material and we can get that effect by changing the edges right here under the soft body so increase the pull and push to 0 0.99 turn the plasticity up to 100 percent the bending up to a max as well and you will see that it acts much more like a metal material But of course it's gonna look a bit weird because now it, uh, it doesn't really collide with anything. So let's add in a simple cube. Go to frame 40 and move it so that it will collide with it at frame 40. Just put it right here and then give it a collision modifier. And here you can just play around with placing it differently. So maybe if you place it here it will give one effect. And if you place it more in the middle or maybe bring it down a bit it will give it another effect. So you can kind of play around with that until you get something that you really like. So I'm pretty happy with the result right here but I want it to have a bit more like upward force. Uh, as soon as it hits here. So I'm actually gonna add in a force field that will push up the back of the car at the moment of impact. So you can do that by just going in to add a force field and you can keyframe the strength to give it a little push upwards right where you want it to. And once you think that looks good, you can actually bake the simulation. So go to cache and just hit bake right here. Right, so once it was done baking, this is what I got. I think that looks great. So I'm gonna go ahead and parent the high poly mesh to this uh, low poly deformation object. So just select the high poly mesh and give it a surface deform modifier. And then we can select deform and just go to frame one and hit bind. And if we hide the deform object, we can see that the high poly mesh follows. And also when the deformation is taking place, you'll see that the deformation is applied to the high poly mesh as well. So that is looking really nice. To add some more detail to the deformation, we can make it so that this part right here and maybe one door kind of flare out and deform on their own. So to do that, we want to go to frame one and go to edit mode and just select everything that we want to separate and animate by itself. So you can just select the, the faces right here and hit Ctrl plus on your numpad to expand the selection like this. And you'll see that we have selected only this part right here. Then hit P and separate by selection and then go back into edit mode but on this part right here. Select the vertical that is close to the rotation pivot point. Uh, shift S and then choose cursor to select it. Go to object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Now we can see that we have the origin right here. To parent it, we can hide the high poly mesh and bring back the deform one. Go to edit mode and select some verticals right here. So just select three and then shift select the deform, hit control P and parent to vertex triangle. And uh, since we moved it, this it gets kind of weird. So just grab it and manually move it back into place. You'll see that when we play, it has parented to that actual part of the mesh and it's gonna flare out a bit. Okay, so now we wanna add some shape keys to actually deform this object right here. So go to object data properties and add in a base shape key and a new one. Give this a value of one, then go to edit mode and now we can start to edit the actual deformed shape of this object. So hit O to enable proportional editing you can see you have all these different options uh, that you can use to give it a deformed look. And another way to give it a bit more randomness is to use the random selection right here. And you'll see what kind of effect that gives. So it just moves the verticals uh, randomly like this. So let's see, I think that looks fine. And you can see how the animation is going to look if you just turn this value up and down like this. So now we wanna go to frame uh, 40 where the collision is taking place. So on frame 41, it is going to be a value of zero. Then on frame 42, 
we want to give it a value of uh, one go to object animation bake action select all of these boxes right here and just hit ok so this is going to bake the animation uh, to actual keyframes that we can smooth out so just grab the corner right here and bring it up a new window make it a graph editor select everything and just hit alt o one time and if we bring back the high poly mesh and rebind this modifier so just hit unbind and bind again because we made changes to the mesh you can see what kind of effect we have so far i'm just gonna do this exact same process for one of the doors now All right, so now that we're done with the door, this is what we got. And I think it's a pretty decent start, but uh, of, of course we gotta make it so that the windows explode into thousands of glass shards. So to do that, we can tab into edit mode and select all of these glass pieces using its uh, material right here. So just select the glass material and hit select. And it will automatically select everything like this and then hit p to separate by selection let's give it a subdivision surface for it to have some more geometry that can explode now we can jump straight to frame 41 where the collision is taking place and hit object quick effect and then select a quick explode we're not going to change too much here, but we want to make it so that the number of particles is uh, way bigger. I'm going to go for something like 5000. You can see now we have loads of uh, particles. And if we make the deform object an actual collision object, that will push all the, uh, all the particles with the collision. And when it tumbles, they will kind of follow and bounce off the car. So just add in a collision modifier right here. And let's see how that looks. I'm just going to increase the lifetime as well to be 250 frames so that they won't uh, despawn in the middle of the animation. And then we can go to cache and just hit bake right here. Okay, so I got a little problem because um, I accidentally hit delete all bakes on the soft body simulation. So I just had to redo that. But uh, now that that is done, this is what we got. So you can see that we have some deformation on the car. We have these parts that hang loose and we have some uh, glass that shatters as well. Uh, the only thing that's missing right now is some smoke to bring it all together. So to do that, we want to create a new cube, which is going to be our smoke domain and scale it up to fit the trajectory of the car. Right now we can set this one to fluid, domain, and just keep it on gas. To add an emitter, we can use a sphere, scale it down a bit, and parent it to the front of the vehicle. We can use the same parenting technique that we did before, uh, so parenting to the vertices. To make this uh, sphere actually emit smoke, we want to give it a fluid and set it to flow, keep it on smoke and make it in flow on the flow behavior. Uh, if we increase the resolution of the smoke domain and play it, we can see that we have some smoke. But we wanna increase the resolution a bit more, maybe 200 and also give this object a fluid, set it to effector and keep the effector type as collision. This is going to make it so that the smoke kind of forms around the car. And I noticed that we need to increase the resolution a bit more. So 265 should be fine. We can also set the cache frame start to 43. Set the cache type from replay to modular. Check is resumable, then just hit bake data right here. Now to give it some more details, we can enable noise right here and just hit bake noise. 
So once I was done baking, I realized that I wanted a bit more subdivisions, so I increased it to 300 and then baked it uh, one more time here and then baked noise as well. And what we're left with is, is this scene right here. And all we need to do now is just uh, fix the materials and then add in a HDRI and render it out. Thank you guys for watching, if you have any questions or want to suggest a future tutorial, feel free to leave it as a comment down below, I read and try to answer all of them. From now on I'm gonna upload a tutorial video like this every week, so if you don't want to miss that, feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.